Now, let's change dramatically topic. That is, routing in React. That will be the topic of the rest of these three hours. So why we need routing in a React application? What, what is routing? Any idea? Yes. Yes, in a network would be the way packages move around the network, go to one, one position, one element, to, to one uh, device, to another device, let's say. Yes, but it's for network. In a website? Entering or uh, other pages, for example, uh, uh, Facebook, uh, entering to marketplace, uh, entering to uh, other accounts. Uh, Yes, so how we can move from one page to another one, if we can. And what happens if the page does not exist? All things that you experience when navigating the web. So currently we have one page, right? In our application, also in the lab application, you just have one page. And indeed, we added, we have a table, if you remember in the, our example, we have a question, we have a table, and we have a form that we had to handle hmm, all the logic for appearing, disappearing the form, showing information in that form, etc., manually. That's because we have one single page with all in it. And also, if I want to bring a person directly to the form, skipping uh, the table is not possible in this moment because we have just one address localhost 51 whatever it is 53 5173 and nothing else just the root page there's just one page with all in it and indeed we didn't uh, for instance added in our application the list of all questions and clicking one question we see the answer and then, because that is, it will be everything in one single page. And, but if you wanted to do that, if you wanted to have also the list of all questions and click in one single question, show its own answer, how, we can, how can we ever do that? Hmm? So, how now can we have the list of questions, click on the questions, and show the table instead of the list of all questions. States. With states, clearly, but not only with state. I mean, yes, with state. But what we have, what we need to do. We can add other components like the list, but then clicking on this, we need to make the list of questions disappear and appear the answer to that specific questions. So we should handle it with component, with states, clearly. But which, we, which are the logic that we need to, to implement to that? Re-rendering. Re-rendering, but not only re-rendering. Yes, re-rendering clearly, but also? Uh, get the answers from the database. Get the answers from whatever they're stored. We, we don't have a database yet, but the logic. We have a list of questions in a component. We need to display another component instead of it. This is the, the answers. So we need to hide it closely. We need to remove it from the page. Like we did for the form. If you remember, the form is not hidden. It's not in the page until we press add. When we press add, the button component is replaced with the form. 
and when we cancel or submit the form we replace the form with the add button that is what we have in the code and that is also what generates uh, the the various things that we have to do last time mm, when we have to set the edit answer editable answer otherwise the form will continue to see to show us the previous answer in editing and then we, we click add uh, we still see the the last answer that we were edited because we were using the same form to do editing adding etc so we have to add the keys etc etc mm. this is also because we are in a single page and we have to handle all of this manually so if we add a list of questions we should have the list of questions and then pressing a link we should remove the list of questions and add in that place the list of answer and then we probably need a back button or show the list of answer list of questions that will remove the list of answer and the form and show the list the components representing the list of questions and all this logic is to be done manually because we are in a single page, we need to handle all of these. We need to handle back, forth, appear, disappear, etc. And this is tricky. And that's, that's why we haven't done it uh, until now. We, uh, we just started with, oh, we have one question and it's answer. And it's easy. Hmm? Because it's already complicated to handle the form. And handling a, a piece in addition is even more complicated. Uh, but a typical web application is not made by a single page right why we cannot have the form in another page you typically have hmm? if you are in an application that does that show something you want to create something new you typically move to another page to create something new and then go back and this is something that we cannot do in this moment and this is something that react natively does not support there is no way in React natively to have multiple pages. It just operates with the concept that everything is in one page. And then it's the developer that should decide what to show and disappear every time. And if you notice, clearly being in a single page means that we didn't change the URL ever. So if you want, again, to say this is the URL that represents the form to adding an answer, we cannot have that. Because it's the same URL for everything. No matter how complicated it is, the content is just one single URL, and we cannot move from there. So more complex applications clearly have and needs multiple pages. And also can use all the facilities that a browser has, like and for facilities, I mean like the back button. If I go back here, I go in the previous page that was this one, the, the new tab. It doesn't go in the, so here I'm in, in Italian, then I translate it in English. If I press back, I don't go in the previous translation. I go to the previous page. And it's normal for React to do that. And it's normal for the browser to do that, because this is one page. And if I press back, I go to the previous page, no matter what happened here. Hmm? And again, if you have a, compl a complex application, this is not the behavior that you want. You want also to use like back and forth. You want to have the history. You want to have all these facilities, let's say, that the browser provided that we are used to. Um, And we can also have the URL to convey information, because actually URL conveys information in website. Say where you are, or by reading the URL, you can, you can say that you are in one page or in another, etc. Mm. So as, as an example, uh, we clearly have, mm, even in single page application, we can have multiple pages. There is the root, the index page, there could be the slash profile page or slash whatever name it is of the person and then you can have slash pages question mark category something else mm. and slash page name that is different from profile name 
and you want to handle all of this without reloading the page changing the content the layout if needed keeping the common part in common and with the url the change so that if i want to go here i can but if i want to go directly here without passing through the home page i can as well hmm? so this is the goal that we want to have an application like many other web applications that support multiple pages and allow us to go directly to one of those pages if appropriate So, in the web, uh, URL determine, determines the type of pages or section of a web page. So, traditionally, when you change the URL, you change the page that is in the web browser. You can try with whatever application, you change the URL, you change the content of the page. There could be a single page application, there could be a multiple page application, doesn't matter, that's the standard way of working a new url corresponds to a new page shown to the person visiting the application and the url also can embed information that could be use useful for the visitors but are surely useful for the developer uh, about what is in the page hmm? for example you can have slash that is the index and profile.name and post slash a number and you can or page name and from this you can understand that profile is probably the profile page and it's not the page the name or another page and post a number this number is probably what could be this number an id of what of a post because it's written there you don't have to understand that to, to reason a lot about this because it's plain written there hmm? so url that we exper experience have a meaning have information embedded about it and again also they can also share saved i want to send you my profile page i will send you the link of my profile page just keeping this in mind that even if we will enable multiple pages react application under the root will always return the same page exactly as it's doing now hmm? what we are going to do is to enable react in the browser to change the url but the server will always provide one single page and the routing the changing of a page will be happen in the browser hmm? so it's the browser that will handle the links and the change of pages within it the server will always send one single page that is the react application like it's doing now so all of this is not possible in react mm, by the standard react and so we need uh, an external library to end the routing and there are quite a, a few uh, router javascript library and the idea is that this router can read and write basically the url that a person or a link insert in the browser and according to the url display the correct react component on the page also handling all the again facility of the browser back forward back and forth and the history etc 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 so in principle whenever the user clicks on a new url or write a new url in the browser we prevent the browser from fetching the new page in a traditional way so asking the server give me the new page this is not happening but it's a react that intercept through this library react router to intercept the request coming from the server from the browser mm, the new url and will switch in and out components to build the page that we want to be associated to that specific url mm. and well we are using react router that is to be installed 
uh, currently in version 6.11 and React Router is available for React on the web and React native also. So for the web, we need to install a React Router DOM that will br brings with him the core uh, React Router function as a dependency. Uh, well, features connect the React navigation with the browser navigation, show components according to the current URL. It's work mostly as a React components. It has hooks for do some things. So the paradigms are the same that we have already seen. We need to do something special, however. We need to define links not with the A tag, that is normal A tag in HTML, but with a special component that is link. Why? Why we cannot use the A href something, but we need to use the React router components for what I've said until now? Sorry, because A? Is under control. Should be past pros. Because A is, un is not under control, it should be post pros. Well, that could be a, a case, but there is one more fundamental case. I told you that the routing is happening in React. It's the browser that change pages and it never reach the server. The standard behavior of a link is instead Loader? Send a new request. So the A, href, send a new request. If you go to A, href, whatever, it send a new request to whatever and expect a new page from whatever. Instead, we want to skip this part. We want to handle everything internally, and this internally means using these properties like link that will allow us. If you use a href in most of the case with router, in most of the case it works. Let me repeat: it most of the case it works, but just reloads the page because it sends another request to React that has just one page, and React will rebuild from scratch, and then the React router will bring you to the right page that you want. So the final results will be the same. It's just a longer path with respect to link that instead doesn't, will not do any request to the server, but just internally showing you the right page. Like if, the, if you have a big if, if the URL is this, then show this component. Otherwise, if the URL is this, show these other components. So the idea of the routing is just having a big, let's say, if table, let's say if the URL is this, show this component, else, if, etc. But it do does without having a huge if. Hmm? And then to determine what must be rendered, we use another component called the root that will define, okay, the root for the home page is this, and the components that should be rendered are those one, etc. And the whole application, or at least the part of the application that is sensible to routing must be wrapped in a browser router container that is yet another component. Hmm? So we are going to add some components, specifically browser routes, browser router, routes, root, and we are going to use links and navigate sometime to build the routes and allow various pages to navigate from one part to the art, uh, one part to another part of the same application. So from a very high level, this is what a simple application with React Router appear. You have, let's say, app.js that defines some routes, and for each route, it defines a path. And for each route, it also defines which is the components with props, etc. So normal components that you want to render when you reach that path. So in this case, when you have, when you type on the browser address, localhost 5173, 
slash the router, we say, okay, slash is this one, it's not about, it's not dashboard. So I will render the component or the components. Uh, hmm? Here you can have also multiple one that represent that single page. In this case, the own component. If your path is about, that is different from dashboard, hmm, it will render the about component. And if the URL is instead dashboard, it will render yet another component, this dashboard. Hmm? And if you type this in the browser address bar, it will work like this. And if you have another page with links to these components, to this root, you can have link to and the name to show the link to. Hmm? So link to slash will bring to the root, link to about when clicked will bring to the about page, let's say, a link to dash will bring to the to nothing actually, link to dashboard will bring to dashboard, link to dash will bring to a error, not page, not found, hmm? because there is no link that's called dash, because here is dashboard, okay, so this is a typo. Hmm? And all these routes need to be in a browser router components, need to be just stored in the browser router components. So, <clears throat> Routers can be defined in two ways nowadays as functions or as a component. We are going to use the component version in the course, but most of the documentation in the React Router website is now updated to show the functions hmm, way of proceeding. So keep this in mind if you have if you look at the documentation in the website of React Router. They are equivalent for many things. So all the things you do with components, you can do also with functions. Vice versa is not true. There are things in functions, in the function way to define routers that you cannot do in the components way. And this is clearly specified in the docu documentation. These are advanced features in a way. Some of the, them are really nice, but most of them are also quite new. Hmm? So last year they didn't exist, for instance. So it's something that was born that has less than one year of age. Hmm? So for, for now, we stick with the router components. They are still valid, still work, just doesn't allow you to do more advanced things than the uh, function version of router will do. And again, if you look at the documentation, the documentation is mostly updated with functions, but the tutorial, etc., on the website. Uh, but the other things still exist and still are um, working. Mm? Just needs a little bit more effort in reading the documentation to translate from one uh, possibility to the other but they are still exist and we are going to use the components in the course. Um, there are different routers available hmm, as the container. We are going to use the browser router that handles URL normally hmm, in the browser and it's actually the recommended version. So with browser router we can write URL like this slash about, slash dashboard, hmm? whatever we want. There is also another router that is the Ash router that uses, uh, um, that is compatible with older browser and is not really recommended for uh, modern application. And that instead of using slash about, it will link to one single page hmm? and then will be Ash something. Hmm? So the URL is not really changing, it's just uh, a part of the URL that is changing according to, uh, to where we are. This is obviously working in the past for modern browser, let's say in the last five, ten years, uh, 
browser router is working properly and it relies on a uh, API of HTML5. So whatever this API is working, that is a standard API, is working, then the browser router is working. Uh, clearly needs to be imported as anything else. And in some cases might require some server configuration. Uh, not in our case. Uh, and then we will see how to handle it when we will add the server. But for now, we, there is no other configuration, specific configuration to be done. Mm? Just use it. Uh, in addition to a router, we need to define which are the routes, like an example. And each route is a specific part. I already told you there is a path and there is the elements that correspond to the components to be rendered when we are in that route. Uh, the path could be in three, written in three different ways, as three different alternatives. One is the static segment, or could be static, slash about, slash users, etc. So just a static part. You can have a dynamic path, partially or not. So it's like slash users, colon, user ID. And clearly, user slash user ID is the part that in the browser will change. User slash one, user slash two. And these are the user ID that will be available in the code so that you can use the number, the ID, pass it through the browser to do any operation. And you can have the start segments, that means whatever it is after this position, any charter, any string, hmm? catch everything else. And if there is more than one match in the path, the most specific one is selected. Hmm? Always. So that's the criteria. It's not order based, but it's specificity based. So if you have a slash user one as the slash one in the URL, it will match users user ID because that is the most specific representation for that path. Uh, and then there is some option like case sensitive to become the URL case sensitive, but it's not recommended. But if one wants, can make the URL case sensitive. By default, is not. Uh, you can also nest the root hmm? if needed. And if you nest the root, you have to use one component. And we will hopefully have time to see it in an example. That is the outer components. It's just a position where the children of the roots that are nested within the roots will go to put their information. And if you forget this outlet component, children will not be displayed at all. Hmm? Um, so like here, for instance, this is a nested root because you have a root that rendered this layout. And then these are nested inside this. Hmm? So in this case, it's a very simple example, not really particularly useful but in this case in the root you have the layout in slash about you have the about and in slash dashboard you have dashboard and since these are nested this about component or this dashboard component will be rendered in this position in the father component in the parent component where it's written outlet. So this about will be put here in the end instead of this outlet. And this dashboard also will be put here and everything else will remain as it is. And in the root, you will have just everything without anything here, just empty space. Without this outlet, this about component will not render because it doesn't know how, where to render it. There are then some special routes. There is the index route that requires no path. <coughs> that is typically used for the home page. So the root. There is the layout route that is another route, written as a route, but without the path. Uh, that is always matched 
because there is no path. So every time you call, it's, it's a match the root. And it's always, it's sometimes useful to wrap the common layout of the application, the common structure, the navbar, the sidebar, elements that must be in all the applications, similarly to what is done here. So here you can remove path. Hmm? You can remove these and add maybe these here, and these will become a layout root because it's just to represent the layout of the entire application. Hmm? Then here you don't have an index anymore, you don't have a root, a root, a root or out anymore, but in this case, this becomes a layout root. And there is also the no match rule root uh, that is often used to say everything else in the URL is not about, is not dashboard, is not the root element is a not found page. I don't know what is. So I will show you an error page saying this, is root, this URL is not available, this page is not available, go back to the home page. And this is with a path of asterisks to catch everything else that is not specific, not specified in the previous route. And here there is an example of this uh, no match and of the index that actually is a keyword that you add hmm, to specify that is the index. And all of these, since they are children nested within this bigger root, hmm, they will be rendered in this place, in the outlet, so that everything else, the navigation, etc., will still remain in all the pages, including the 404 not found page. Uh, well, navigation, you have two options, link to, we already seen, and use navigate, this is a hook to navigate to a specific part of the, um, of the page. The difference is that link to is a component, and so you can use it to generate a link. If instead you want to programmatically navigate to another page, so without clicking a link, you submit a form, you want to redirect to the home page, then is where you can use, use Navigate. Mm -hmm. So it's not a link that you click and go another page, it's you, the developer, saying when this operation is done, I want to move to this other page automatically. And this is where you use Navigate, to navigate in another page. This is what we already said. And here there's an example of Navigate. You see the link is just a link to generate href h, h, a href on the page so components to display but if you are uh, submitting something you want to maybe create an object and then navigate to a different url otherwise it will stay in that page and there is no explicit user action on the page it's just an internal navigation i complete an operation i redirect to another page that's the other page that the developer decide and not that the user click on. Hmm? And yes, all the paths are always relative hmm? to the current page if it's not, they will not start with slash. Uh, well, you can also have nav link that know when the link is active or not, while link is more stupid, and so it doesn't know if it's active or not. If you have to render, for instance, in an app bar that you are on a single button, that's click the button, you want the active state, you can use nav link that allow you to define and handle if the link is active or not. And you can also render it differently if it's active or not. Hmm? Uh, dynamic routes. If you define a dynamic routes like here, hmm, this ID can be taken with a hook that is called use params. This use params contains the parameter inserted in the path and is automatically available after import in the components that is rendered when you reach that route. And so you can use it. So post one here in this uh, component, you have, okay, you have that ID is equal to one and you can query your database from here to get only the 
uh, post with, L with ID equal to 1, or you can get it from your state, only the post with ID equal to 1. You can do other things saving this information, and these are the information that are reported on the URL in the browser. And here there is an example, and also uh, we can pass information between pages. Hmm? I can, for instance, say that when I click on a URL, I want to pass an object to that page. Hmm? So this will not be rendered in the URL clearly, but it's an information that is associated with that. So imagine our question and answer application. We have the edit button on a single answer. And if we put the form in another page, we will need to pass the answer to be edited to that form. So currently is one single page, but if we move to a different page, we need to pass this information from one side to another. And so we can say that state is equal to the answer that is selected in the row. And on the other side, in the form, we can use use location to get to the state property the information we have passed through. So if we want to edit an answer, we can pass state equal answer zero. And then here in location.state, we will find answer zero and then we can put it in the form, for instance. So every time we need to pass an information, let's say a complex information, uh, not in the URL, we can do it through state, and it will use the location uh, API of the browser. That is, again, HTML5 and API. There is one beware here, a point of attention. That object in this state, since they need to pass from one page to another through the browser, they are serialized typically a string. So every complex object will not be serialized back properly. That means that the default native object works. Strings, number, object, array are serialized and deserialized properly in this phase, but dates, for instance, are not. So if in the state you pass a DJS object, this will not be deserialized properly, and so you will not be able to use it in the other page. So if the elements you want to pass is a complex element, like a DJS object not native in JavaScript, then you need to find ways to pass this object through. For instance, in case of dates, Instead of passing the DJS object, we can pass the date, the string version of the dates, and then re rebuild the DJS object if needed when it's needed in the other page with the constructor. But string will be easily serializing strings, so they move through pages without any problem. And then there is a similar hook to get any search parameter like this, if needed. And you can get the parameter by uh, name. So as a summary, and then we, we are going to have a break and see this in an example after the break, the application or the big part of application needs to have a routing, needs to be wrapped in a browser routes. Then we have routes, root, and outlet, if there are nested routes. For navigation, we're going to mainly use link and use navigate. If you want, navlink is equivalent, again, to link, but it also handles the active or not active state of the link. And then you can have parameters through hooks, that is, use param to get the dynamic part of the URL, use search param to get the everything after the question mark in a URL, that is by definition a search parameter, and use location for retrieve the location state and pass information through one, from one page to another, but also to enable uh, 
back, uh, the back option, like going back one in the history or, or move forward in the history, in the browser history of the page. Mm -hmm. So this is a summary. We can now have 20 minutes break and we will start with an exercise trying to move our React question and answer application to use multiple pages in the remaining one hour and a half.